This is the advanced section for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Here we'll cover instant overheads, piano inputs, button up reversals, also called negative edge reversals, and safe jumps. Instant overheads. So what's an overhead? That's a ground attack that you have to block high. And there's not many of those in the game. Here's Ryu's. It's a two-hit overhead attack, and you've got to stand up to block it. Now, you can make your own overheads with a few other characters. Like, look at Chun-Li. If she jumps and then immediately does a head stomp, you actually have to block that high. And it's a high enough priority move that it can beat dragon punches. Bison's jump forward can also be used in this way. You jump and then do that medium kick right away. It'll hit an opponent that's ducking. Balrog can also do the same thing with his jump medium kick. Piano inputs. Getting a reversal attack, such as a dragon punch, right when you get up from a knockdown can be pretty difficult in Super Turbo. There is only a small window of time to execute reversals. Let's say you're knocked down and you need to do a dragon punch to get out of trouble. If you execute the dragon punch like this, where you press the jab button and hold it down at the end of your motion, you've only got one button input that the game could recognize to do that dragon punch, the jab button down. But if you do it like this, where you press and release the jab button very quickly, you actually have two chances because when the jab button is released, that counts as a special move input. Now if you release the jab button, you won't do a normal move, uh, like a, a jab won't come out, but it does allow you to throw a fireball or do an uppercut or any other special move. So what would be even better than that is if you end your dragon punch motion by pressing all three punch buttons in rapid succession and then releasing all three in rapid succession. That's three button down inputs and three button up inputs for a total of six chances to get your dragon punch to come out. And because you have to roll your fingers across the buttons quickly to do that, some players refer to it as the piano method. Using this piano method, you won't be exactly sure which dragon punch will come out, either the jab, strong, or fierce version. But chances are, you don't really care. You just want some version to come out, and your chances of that go way, way up if you use this. I should note for some characters, it doesn't even matter which version you do. Like, if Cammy does her dragon punch with kick move, and that move is blocked, she actually has the same recovery no matter which version of the move is used. So you should definitely use the piano method on her reversal dragon punch every time. And another note for Zangief, if you use the piano method to do the spinning pile drive move, which means you would roll your fingers across all three punch buttons, you might accidentally get a lariat. So it's better to roll your finger across just two punch buttons because two punch buttons will not activate a lariat in the arcade version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Button-up reversals, also called negative edge reversals. As mentioned in the last section, you can do a special move by releasing a button or by pressing it. And remember that normal moves will only come out when you press the button and not release it. You can use this to your advantage when you're trying to do reversals, or even in other situations. It's most useful for Fei Long and Honda, but it can be used by other characters like T-Hawk as well. Fei Long is a special case because his version of the Dragon Punch, the Flame Kick, ends with the joystick in defensive crouch. Usually, you'll get a low short kick if you mess up the motion. But, if you do the joystick motion, and then you release the short kick button, rather than press, press, pressing it, you'll either get a flame kick if you timed it right, or you'll just be safely blocking if you mistimed it. This allows you to go for a reversal flame kick without really risking anything. You'll just block if you mess up. Now, Honda's throw has a very weird property. You're actually able to store this throw. The Ochio throw motion is forward, down forward, down, down back, and then press a punch button. But you can actually hold the joystick and down back for as long as you want, and then press the punch button later. Here's an example where Honda has the opponent knocked down, and he wants to do low jab into Ochio throw. So first of all, after the first low jab Ochio throw, he can do another low jab, and then he can release the punch button to execute the Ochio throw rather than press it. Now the opponent might be able to do a reversal attack against the low jab, but against the Ochio throw, if it doesn't come out for some reason, Honda will just be blocking and he didn't risk anything by going for it. 
Here's another example of the button up technique with T Hawk versus Ryu. Here, T Hawk does low jab, low jab, and he holds the jab button down the second time. Then he does the 360 motion or spinning pile drive motion. For him, the move is called the cyclone, though. And at this point, Ryu might do a dragon punch. If he does do a dragon punch, when T Hawk releases the jab button, he just won't get the cyclone move, and he'll be safe and he'll be able to block. But if Ryu does not do a dragon punch, when T-Hawk releases the button after that 360 motion, he'll get the Cyclone. So it's a win-win. It's a safe way to attempt to do the Cyclone. Safe Jumps Let's say you have your opponent knocked down, and your opponent is really good at doing reversal attacks when he gets up, like a reversal dragon punch with Ryu. Even in this situation, it's still possible to attempt a jump-in attack. It's strange, I know. But the key is that reversal attacks don't usually hit on the very first frame. Ryu's Dragon Punch, for example, is invulnerable at the very beginning for four frames, but it can't actually hit until the fifth frame, or fifth sixtieth of a second. That means that if you time your jump-in really late, and just as Ryu gets up, you do your attack, it's possible to time it so that your attack only intersects Ryu during those very first four frames of his Dragon Punch, and those first four frames can't hit you. This is difficult to time, but if you do it right, here's what happens. If your opponent does do the Dragon Punch, your move will not hit him, because he's invulnerable, but he won't hit you either, because by the time Ryu got to the fifth frame, the frame that can actually hit on his Dragon Punch, you will have already landed, and you'll be able to block safely. If Ryu decides not to do a reversal dragon punch, then he'll have to block your attack. This is especially useful if you want to throw the opponent with Honda's Ocho throw, or Zangief's spinning pile drive, or Ken's knee bash. Using this technique lets you actually jump in safely against many characters, force them to block, and then go for a throw. So for throw characters, this can really turn the tables in a match. Watch this safe jump setup for Ken. and this other safe jump setup with Ken. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Again, I'm David Serlin, lead producer from Backbone Entertainment and Digital Eclipse. And on behalf of the entire team and Capcom, we thank you for playing.